Hi guys, this video was a requested one. There were quite a few people who were interested in seeing a more detailed devlog on how exactly I build my scene. You know, layer management, lighting, post-processing, etc, etc. So, I thought this could be a great opportunity to make one, and hopefully you'll get to learn something along the way. Aside from that, this devlog I think could be useful even for future me. As a solo developer, you must cover almost every area of the game. From art to direction, scene building, to game design, story, lore, effects, script, code, and so many other things. Oh my god, I'm just getting a panic attack just thinking about all this. But anyway, the point is, well, it's very easy to forget stuff you've been working on for a while, especially after you move on to something else. So here we go. Let's start from the beginning. First we'll make a new scene using the URP pipeline. If your scene is not already in URP, watch this video on how to convert it. But be prepared to have a nervous breakdown, since the URP transition is going to ruin many of your materials. But fortunately you can fix that, it just takes some time. Ok, so let's drag a few assets into our scene. The very thing you'll notice is the fact these sprites don't really overlay much with each other, especially in the Z position. So let's fix that. Search for Render 2D. This comes automatically with a URP pipeline, and we are going to change from default to custom axis. Then set zero value to Y axis and 1 to Z. And voila! Magic! Now we should organize things a bit, so let's make three folders. Foreground, midground, and background. The next thing we must absolutely do is add sorting layers. I'm thinking to add around 6 maybe, but if needed I can definitely add more. So each sprite from the scene will go into the assigned layer. The platform the player will walk on will remain on default, while sprites closer to that will go in the midground section. Let's add multiple objects to the scene. By the way, you can select multiple sprites at once and sort them rather than each individually. For the purpose of this video, I'm thinking nothing too fancy, rather a simple scene with some platforms the player might jump on. Now you might have noticed these background sprites are a bit blurry. That's because, well, I simply blur them in Photoshop. As you can see, I have a special folder for the blurred assets. Things that are closer to the player will have less blur, while things in the distance will have more. That's at least one way to do it, maybe it's not the most effective one, but at least gives me a certain level of control having multiple levels of blur. Another way would be to use multiple cameras, and then blur the backgrounds with that. I will show you towards the end how to do that as well. Anyway, as you can see, the scene seems to have more and more assets and layers now, in the background as well in the foreground.
I also added a few simple planes with reduced opacity on almost each background layer. This is pretty great if you want your scene to have more depth. That being said, let's take care of the lighting. The very first thing that I've made was to create a few global lights that will have an effect on certain layers. I made one for the foreground with reduced value to zero, and I made another one, except this one won't be zero. Something a bit closer, it's all up to you how dark you want the second layer of your foreground to be. Now let's make another global light, except this one will be for the midground and lastly one for the background. Actually, let's make two. The idea is to make things dark first and then bring them to light using various tools. Ok, so the first thing we are going to use is the shape light, which is pretty great since allows me to have more control over the things I want to be lit. I primarily use this for the platforms where the player is going to step on, ignoring pretty much everything else. For the backgrounds, I'm going to use various spotlights that will highlight parts of the world. I can also play with color in order to create a more mysterious and fantasy mood. I highly recommend watching this video which explains very well how to use color and what works with what so you don't end up just throwing random colors in your game. Managing this can be pretty challenging overall, and I did see plenty of games from AAA to Indie mess this up.
Next, I'm thinking to add more depth to the scene by creating some fog sprites. These are pretty easy to make, just some white dots blurred in Photoshop and exported as PNGs. Then I can simply bring them into Unity, change color, reduce transparency and that's it. Ok, now let's add some sprite lights. Just as before, they are pretty simple to make, then I grabbed and dropped one of the textures I made. To make this, you follow pretty much the same procedure as before. Go into Photoshop, paint a few white dots over a transparent background, blur them and then export it as PNG. Now I don't want the sprite lights to have an effect over everything, so I'm going to assign only the layer I want it to be affected. And oh, ok, so the reason this doesn't work as intended is because of those large fog panels we added in the beginning, which are on the same sorting layer. Soon as I disable those sprites, bam, we see the lights falling only over the trees. However, I do want my fog as well, you know, have my cake and eat it too. So let's make another layer that is special only for the fog panel. As I said, we can add multiple layers later if we must. Ok, now let's add multiple sprite lights to the scene. By the way, one quick tip. The sprite shapes must have the same Z position as the assets you want to assign it on. Otherwise the parallax effect will display it on a different speed. You see, something like this we want to avoid. For the sun rays, we can apply the same technique, except we'll turn on the volumetric option. From this point onwards, you can spend as much time as you want adding more assets to the scene so it's fuller. Grass, rocks, bushes, whatever you want. Now let's take care of the cherry on the top, which is post-processing. To do that, we must create a global volume with a new profile. Then click override and then select whatever effect you want. First, I would like to add some bloom, but just a bit since it can burn up my scene very quickly. Oh, it, uh, it doesn't work. Ok, so I think I might know why. I simply forgot to check the post-processing option from the main camera. Then I added some color curves and pretended like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, I will not bother much with that. Anyway, the next effect is pretty great, Lift Gamma Grey. This can easily turn up your scene into something a bit more cinematic. 
just play around a bit with these free wheels and see what fits your scene. Ok, so after a while these are the effects I ended up with. At the end of the day it's a lot of mix and match and see whatever works for you. But yeah, the end result is an improvement. However, be careful not to go too overboard with these effects. Now the last thing I want to show you is the blurred background. So the very first thing we need to do is duplicate the main camera, make two copy of that. Ctrl D is the shortcut for that, by the way. So the first camera we are going to name uh, something like Camera Sharp and the second one which will contain the blur effect, well, Camera Blur, simple as that. Then select both cameras and make them child of the main camera. Ok, so next let's make another cross-processing volume. This one will only contain the depth on field effect and that's it. By the way, don't forget to make a new profile for this post-processing effect as well. Ok, so the next step is very important. We need to create a separate layer for the blurred camera. Click add layer and name it whatever you want, in this case blurred background or something like this. But in your case you can type it actually correctly. Anyway, so the blurred camera will go on this separate layer. So instead of default, choose background blur. Ok, we need to set up these two cameras. Select both of them, go to render type and change from base to overlay. Then let's choose first camera sharp. In the cooling mask and volume mask section, we need to deselect the background blur layer. Now on the other hand, on the camera blur, in the same sections we'll do exactly the same, except we'll only make visible the background blur layer, everything else will be deselected. Next, the post processing effect must be placed on the same layer, as well as the folder which contains all the assets for the background. Next we need to go in the main camera in the stack section. Here we need to add those two cameras we just created by simply pressing the plus button. Now the order of this really matters. The one above is going to be in the background and the one below in the foreground. It's like the inverse version of Photoshop layers. So, as you can see the midsection has no blur while the background is completely blurred, which is pretty much what we really wanted. Except we still have one problem, we don't really see the skybox at all. And that's because the global lights we created in the beginning, well, they are on the wrong layer. So we'll select both of them and choose background blur layer. And bam bam, thank you ma'am, here's how you blur the background. Next you can choose the type and amount of blur you want, but that's kind of it. Hopefully you've learned something from this video, but if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section. And I will do my best to respond in time. So bye bye, see you next time.